So today we are going to talk about two new principles of art. And let's get into presentation mode. So the principles we're going to be talking about are variety and unity. So before we get into those, let's just quickly look over our elements of art because I'm going to be mentioning these a lot. So just to refresh our brains that our seven elements of art are line, shape, form, space, which we also call depth, color, texture, and value. All right, so why do those elements matter? The elements matter because they are the building blocks for our principles. So remember that the principles of art are how we make designs and compositions and we make designs and compositions by using the different elements of art. Uh, so by using line, by using color in different ways, uh, we create these um, designs in art following our principles. So the principle of variety is a pretty easy one because variety just means that we have a lot of different visual elements. And so we are creating variety by introducing either several different elements or by having variety among a single element. So in this piece right here, we have variety in the different types of shapes. So we have rectangles, triangles, circles. We also have variety in color. So we've got some warm colors, the pink, the yellow, we've got some cool colors. And then we also have variety in the location. So we've got different locations in the page that have different items and variety through size. So there's a lot of variety that's going on in this piece. But let's break down our elements and look at them one by one. So we can have variety through line and we create variety by using lines that are different widths, different lengths, have curvature or are straight, uh, and then of course different texture. So a line that is like a dotted line would have a different texture than a line that is not dotted. So here we have a very thick line and then over here we have very thin lines. Uh, these lines are curved into tight little spirals. These lines here are straight. And we don't really have a variety here in line texture. All of these lines are pretty solid. But you could certainly introduce some dotted, jagged lines into a drawing. We also have variety in shape and form. So remember that shape is flat and two-dimensional and form is three-dimensional. So most of these are shapes. They're fairly flat, but right down here, we've got a cube, which is a form. And there's a huge mix here. This is all children's toys. So it has a single theme, but we definitely have a lot of different shapes. There's a lot of geometric shapes, so you can vary your geometric or your organics. Remember, geometric shapes are perfect circles, squares, triangles, and then our more organic shapes would be something like this puzzle piece. Uh, this bear is pretty geometric, but we do have a little bit of organic shape in here when we look at things like the puzzle piece. So you can change up um, and mix up your organic and your geometric to introduce different types of shapes and forms. Of course, we can use different colors. So we can just use a variety of color or we could use a color scheme. And a color scheme can be a nice way to have colors that still match, but there's going to still be some variety. So here, of course, we have a lot of variety in the number of colors. 
and we can have variety with different values. So remember that value is how light or dark something is. So if we have no value, something is completely white. If we have kind of a middle value or some value, we're gonna have a gray. And then if we have as much value as we can have, something is black. So having different values, and even when we are looking at colors, these colors also have different values. So this is a much lighter value and this gray, this purple, they're much darker values. And then finally, we can use different textures. So you have uh, textures of fur. Here you have something that looks like a woven basket. This looks like a cactus. And then you have some very smooth textures in here as well. And we can also have textures that are shiny and textures that are matte. So a matte texture is like this, where it doesn't reflect any light, it's very flat. Or we can have a shinier texture. We can kind of see here, there's a little bit of shine uh, where the light is hitting this basket weave. And these little uh, diamond shapes look very shiny. They almost look like they are a metallic type of surface. All right, so the other principle that we're gonna talk about is the principle of unity. So unity is how you take all these different elements, all these different pieces of your drawing or your composition and pull them all together so that everything looks like it belongs together. And there are a couple of ways, five ways actually, that we can create unity in a piece of artwork. And those are proximity, continuation, repetition, alignment, and color. And we're going to go through each one of those individually. So we're going to start with proximity. So proximity in just regular old English language means that things are close together. And so in art, we're going to place our elements in our composition close together, in close proximity to each other. And that makes it feel like they all belong together, even if they look really different. Now, of course, all the flamingos are flamingos. They're the same color, they're the same type of bird, but all their heads are going in different directions. Their stances are different, but they've been grouped together. So they all feel like they belong together. And if, let's say there was another bird that was completely different in with these flamingos and he was grouped in the middle of this group, everything would still feel unified. It would still feel like he belonged because he's standing so close to the other birds. Continuation uh, is a principle or a part of the principle that can be a little hard to understand. But it's just any time that a kind of shape or element, often in the background, connects one part of a drawing to another part. So here we have an H, and over here we have a maple leaf. They don't necessarily seem to have anything to do with each other. Maple leaf doesn't start with H. But the artist has connected the two together by creating this swoop as the line that goes through the H and not quite touching it to the maple leaf, but we're kind of continuing that shape from the swoop up to the stem of the maple leaf. So it connects the two different elements together without actually connecting them together. Now this could even touch, and that might not have visually been as strong, but it would have done the same thing, which is connecting these two very different shapes to each other. So that's continuation. Repetition is when you have similar elements or items that you repeat again and again. So here we have the repetition of shape, we have color, and then we have these water droplets. So if we'd only had one square that had blue and nothing else was blue anywhere, nothing else was dark blue, this would really stand out and it might not feel like it fit. It would feel very awkward because nothing else had that same color. But the artist has repeated that color in several other squares. And the same thing with the water droplets. If we just had one really big water droplet, it would stand out. And 
by introducing other large water droplets, the artist makes the first water droplet feel like it belongs. So repetition, you're just using the same element or the same item a couple of times instead of just using it once. Then we have alignment. So when things are in alignment, they're all lined up in a straight row. So that straight row could be horizontal like this. It could be diagonal across the page, or it could be vertical. In this case, our alignment is horizontal, so it's going through the middle of the page from left to right. And even though these ice creams are slightly different shapes and different colors, the fact that they're all aligned makes this feel very unified. They all feel like they fit together. And then finally, we can use color to create unity. So here we have lines, and then we have these circles. So we have some really different uh, elements being used together, but there's a very similar color palette. And so a lot of the colors are repeated. And this looks, when I look at it, I see red, red, orange, orange, yellow, yellow, green, and maybe some green. This looks like an analogous color scheme. So colors that are all next to each other on the color wheels. Remember your color schemes. And that helps to unify this piece. So that is it. Those are our two principles of art that you guys are gonna be using as you start your next project.